Hey everyone, welcome back to the NPT Podcast. This is Will Crane, your host. Thank you so much for joining me as we talk through the content you need to know in order to absolutely dominate on test day. So today we'll be talking through a practice question. As you know, in this series, we go through a number of practice questions, try to help you get all the content knowledge you need in order to absolutely dominate and crush the NPTE. So today we'll be talking through a practice question, but before we do, just a quick reminder, if you haven't already, please go over and leave us a review over on Google Play or iTunes, Spotify, wherever it is you listen to this. Also check out our other avenues, our other social media, which would include Instagram, and uh, Facebook, you can find us over on YouTube. Uh, in fact, those of you who enjoy seeing the question, you'll be able to see the question over on our YouTube channel. So besides just the audio version, you can see it. And uh, yeah, we, have, we try to be everywhere you want us to be, get through as many of these questions as we can. And then uh, be sure to check out ptfinalexam.com. We always have an ongoing list of courses you can sign up for. If you want to dominate on test day, uh, usually it takes, uh, it takes more than just hoping you've got to actually put some work into it and we can help you. We give you the tools you need to crush the test by not only understanding the content, but also understanding the best ways to study, the best ways to really leverage your time, because I know you're busy, busier than busy as you go through your final clinicals. We want to help you every step of the way. Check us out over at ptfinalexam.com. So today, we'll be talking through a practice question related to spinal cord injury. So as you know, on the NPT, there are a bunch of questions related to the spinal cord, uh, to neuromuscular and neuro in general. And so the neuromuscular and nervous system, this includes a number of practice questions. You can expect somewhere around 50 questions related to the neuromuscular and nervous system. And so we'll be talking today about the spinal cord injury, about spinal cord injuries and how to do some differential diagnosis there. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into our practice question. As you know, each question, uh, I'll ask you or I'll list the question and the answer options. I'll give you about a minute to determine which answer option you'd like to select and then we will talk about it together. So here we go. A patient suffered a traumatic spinal cord injury six weeks ago and is receiving inpatient rehabilitative care. The patient's abilities include the following. Strong elbow flexion and extension, strong wrist flexion and extension, absent weak, absent or weak finger flexion, absent sensation of the fifth digit and medial upper extremity. Sensory test testing is also, sorry, <coughs> sensory testing is normal on the middle finger, the thumb, lateral arm, and all other cephalid segments. Which of the following functions will most likely also be preserved? So this is a question, I mean, really, this describes dermatomes and myotomes of the upper extremity. And you have to do, have to determine, depending on what you find in the examination data, have to determine what else is likely to be preserved, or what would be correlated. So I'll say it one more time. The patient's abilities include the following. Strong elbow flexion and elbow extension, strong wrist flexion and extension, absent or weak finger flexion, absent sensation on the fifth digit and medial upper extremity. Sensory testing is normal on the middle finger, thumb, lateral arm, and all other cephalid segments. Which of the following functions will most likely be preserved? Number one, abdominal muscle contraction, two, finger extension, three, intercostal muscle contraction, and four, pectoral girdle stabilization. Abdominal muscle contraction, finger extension, intercostal muscle contraction, and pectoral girdle stabilization. Well, the correct answer here is that finger extension. So in the question it describes, we'll start first with strong elbow flexion. So as you know, as you go into strong elbow flexion and wrist extension, that's classically the C6 myotome. And then as you move into elbow extension and wrist flexion, that is the C7 myotome. So we see that C6 and C7 are intact. However, we have absent finger flexion. So the finger flexors, this is, we're talking about the, the anterior surface of the forearm, the long finger flexors, these are associated with C8. And so therefore you are unlikely, well, C8, Clearly, we have weakness with C8 because of the absent or weak finger flexors, and that is confirmed by absent sensation on the fifth digit of the hand and the medial upper extremity. So that's C8 and T1. So therefore, uh, and then it goes on to describe sensory testing is normal and the middle finger and thumb and the lateral arm. So we've got, I always do this. So I, I just hold up your hand. 
if you point to your thumb, the thumb is where you test C6, the middle finger is C8, and sorry, let's see, I skipped one. C6 on the thumb, C7 on the middle finger, and C8 on the little finger. So C6, C7, C8, just hold up your hand and point to the thumb and say C6. C6 is at the thumb. C7, middle finger, C8, little finger. So because the sensory testing is absent at the fifth digit, but is normal at the middle finger and the thumb, again, that tells us that C6 and C7 appear to be preserved, but C8 appears to be involved. So meaning that you have an absent C8 dermatome and myotome. So therefore, the question then goes on to ask, which of the following functions will most likely be preserved? So we want to see what would be preserved. Well, finger extension is the correct answer. Finger extensors are related to the C7 myotome. That's associated with the posterior portion of the forearm. We're talking about, um, you know, as you go into <laughs> really the wrist extensors are from C6 and the wrist flexors are C7. However, with the finger, the fingers are associated with the elbow extension and um, yeah, elbow extension and wrist flexion that you get with the C7 myotome. So therefore, uh, as you look at the, uh, I don't know, I really like the basketball free throw shot as a way to remember the myotomes. So as you cock back to, to do your shot, that's the C6. And as you do the shot, elbow extension, wrist flexion, that's C7. And then uh, that would, all this implicates that, or indicates that the finger extensors would be preserved. Rather, it would be the finger flexors that would be lost associated with C8. Pelvic, or sorry, pelvic, well, certainly pelvic, but pectoral, girdle stabilization, abdominal contraction, and intercostals, these all require the thoracic segments. And so really it just all boils down to, if you couldn't identify that it was necessarily finger extension, you should certainly be able to rule out the abdominals, intercostals, and the pecs, all of which require the thoracic. So T1, somewhere between T1 and T12, depending on how much of the thorax is preserved. You could probably eliminate those ones, leaving you just with the finger extension. All right, so with that, we'll bring this to a conclusion. Again, as we go around the content outline, be sure to uh, you know, leave us a review over on Google Play, Apple, iTunes, Spotify, wherever it is you're listening to this podcast. Also looking for suggestions. If you have a request list of topics you'd like me to cover on the podcast, please head over to ptfinalexam.com slash contact where you'll be able to reach out to us. If you've got a specific request, we can definitely do our best to hit that. In the meantime, take care of yourself as you go through your studies. I know that it's a busy, busy time, but thank you for your efforts. And thank you for spending some time with me as we go through the NPTE podcast. So with that, we'll bring it to a conclusion. Have a fabulous day. We'll crane fist bumps all around. Catch you in the next session.